I now call on Neil Bibby to speak to move amendment number 4682.1. Mr Bibby, you've got about 10 minutes. Thank you, President Officer. Firstly, can I say I welcome this debate on adoption and permanence and also see how appropriate it is uh, to have this debate during National Adoption Week. It is vital that we use this opportunity to discuss how we can improve the adoptions process, improve the support that we give to our most vulnerable children and improve the support we give to adoptive parents. We must look at ways of encouraging people to become adoptive parents, look at ways of sharing good practice and of supporting social workers, adoption panel members, children's hearing panel members and others in the important work they do. As corporate parents, all of us need to work together towards these aims and objectives. I hope and anticipate this will be a consensual and constructive debate, and can I say at the start, uh, we support the Government's motion and our amendment is put forward as a constructive suggestion. We need to work together because we know the scale of the challenge facing us is stark. As the Minister has just said, we know that the, currently there are 16,000 looked after children in Scotland, and this figure has been increasing every year since 2001 and is at the highest level since 1981. We also know that between 2010 and 2011 there has been a 2 per cent increase in the number of children on child protection registers. In terms of placements, the number of children in residential care has remained fairly static over recent years, but there is an increasing number of children that are being looked after in community settings by foster carers, prospective adoptive parents and kinship carers. There is therefore a growing need to increase the number of parents willing to adopt, increase the number of foster carers and to prove the adoption process. We know that children fr thrive in stable and supportive environments and permanence gives children long-term stability. As the Minister said, our policies must be child-centred and put their needs first. I therefore join the Minister in paying tribute to the work of the British Association for adoption and fostering uh, in raising awareness of adoption uh, and, and Bath's National Adoption Week, which is in its 15th year, and uh, obviously the, the campaign of Rule Yourself In. I am pleased that there will be a whole host of events and activities taking place right across the UK aimed at raising awareness about the rewards and challenges of adoption. I was pleased to see there are a number of events happening in Scotland, including talk to us about adoption drop-in sessions, one of which will take place, I understand, at the St Enoch Shopping Centre in Glasgow on Thursday. I am also pleased that Bernardo Scotland is hosting adoption information evenings in Edinburgh, Glasgow and Aberdeen. This type of event is an ideal opportunity for people to go along, meet Bernardo staff and find out a bit more about what adopting with Bernardo's is like. I hope and anticipate these information sessions will be well attended. I was also pleased to see that the campaign is using social media as a means of raising awareness and interacting uh, with those interested in adopting. The National Adoption Week website encourages people to participate in the discussion by joining Bath's Chief Executive David Holmes on Wednesday from 7pm to 8pm for a Twitter question and answer session on adoption. This positive work should be welcomed because we do need to encourage more people to consider becoming adoptive parents and foster carers. I am sure we all have had contact with parents who have adopted children. I know a number of parents myself who have done just that. I am sure, like many others, they were frustrated at how long it took and frustrated at the processes they had to go through. But at the end of the day, they are delighted now to be supporting their child in a loving environment. Yes, sir. Richard Lyle. On, that, on the point you just made out how long it should take to adopt, how long do you think it should take? It took me six years. Mr Bibby? Well, six years is, is clearly um, very long indeed, and, and I think um, be, you know, becoming a foster carer um, or adoptive parent is not, is not easy, nor it, it should be, but, and candidates do need to go through long and rigorous assessments and sets of checks to ensure um, that children will be safe and nurtured, but I think, um, of course, we want to ensure the appropriate checks are in place, um, but we do need to establish permanency sooner rather than later. Um, lengthy delays in decision-making and establishing permanency are not only frustrating for adoptive parents, but can also be damaging 
and confusing for the child. We know this is easier said than done because adoption plans can be contested and sometimes there can be challenges in placing children until the final order is made. But we must listen to those parents and people working on the front line as to how we can address these issues. In terms of the Children and Young People Bill that the Minister mentioned, uh, I welcome the move to ensure carers receive appropriate uh, recognised training. However, we would caution the Government uh, that any training should be at an appropriate level. Similarly, whilst we welcome the move to limit the number of children any foster care can care for one at, uh, at one time, we cannot be so rigid in the application of this regulation that children from multi-sibling families need to be split up for no other reason than the family exceeds the regulatory number. The well-being of children must always be our prime concern. Uh, the Scottish Government's plan in the Children and Young People will to enshrine getting it right for every child in legislation and having a named person for each child is also welcome as is seeking to improve the information sharing and planning in relation to individual children and will help with the early intervention we need to see. Early intervention is crucial because we know that in July 2011 there were 80 unborn children on child protection registers. Previously, some local authorities did not place unborn children on child protection registers until the child was actually born. The revised national guidance now states that unborn children should be placed on child protection registers if this is required. This is a welcome step and it is to be hoped that this will lead to children be being placed in permanent care more quickly. Early intervention is also crucial because we know identifying uh, adoptive parents for older children is a major challenge. It can be difficult to find them for boys over the age of five and it can be difficult to find them for girls over the age of eight. It is also difficult to find adoptive parents for children with special needs and these children will often be the most damaged from their life experiences. It should not be forgotten that even after a child is adopted or fostered, parents will often require ongoing support. There are good examples of such care, with Bernardo's providing a post-adoption support service, which I know a number of adoptive parents and foster carers have found very useful. Therefore, the Government's commitment in its National Parent Strategy to developing good practice in providing support to adoptive parents before and after a child is placed with them is, of course, one that we welcome. Sharing good practice, and the Minister mentioned this, is key and is one of the major themes in the very helpful briefing that Bernardo Scotland have provided for today's debate. They raise a number of very important points and suggestions. They raise concerns about inconsistency regarding what evidence is gathered by local authorities in the decision-making process. They also believe that local authorities and the Scottish Government must collect more robust data on this process, including the time taken to place the child and reasons for delay. And they point out concerns that there is currently no aggregated data or evidence routinely collected which could help identify areas of good practice. I know the Minister will consider the points raised by Bernardos carefully, as I am sure we all appreciate that data collection is crucial to understanding the problems and helping to improve outcomes. Sharing good practice is also important because the recruitment of prospective adoptive parents is not always uniformly positive across Scotland. Some authorities do struggle to identify potential parents. Bernardo Scotland also make a very important point about support for social workers, which we want to raise today. As a son of two retired social workers, I probably should declare some sort of interest here. But there is no doubt that social workers uh, do a very important job and are caring and dedicated professionals who do a very important job in what is often very challenging circumstances. Resources are important in this debate and it is concerning to hear of social workers with increasing caseloads and the concerns raised about the pressures this places on them when trying to meet the needs of children and families. We must also aim to ensure that social workers are adequately supported <coughs> and properly resourced and we should thank social workers for all the work they do all year round that often goes unrecognised along with thanking the hard work of adoption panel and children hearing panel members. The problems that looked after children in the adoption process have been with us for many generations. Solving those problems will not be easy, but we must do whatever we can because we know that if we can give children a stable, loving and supporting environment, they will thrive and they will flourish. 
We must do what we can to ensure children get the best possible start in life. We must do what we can to ensure children have a stable and supportive environment. We must do what we can to share good practice, and we must do what we can to support adoptive parents and people uh, working on the front line. As corporate parents, we must do all that we can to help Scotland's most vulnerable children, and I move the amendment in my name.